Hi there, it's Dr. Bernstein, the founder and director of Get Yourself Into College. And in this video, I want to give you an example of how you can gracefully and effectively answer one of the worst questions that also happens to be asked very frequently at the beginning of alumni interviews for undergraduate admission. And actually, it's not even really a question. It's the old Oh, so why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself opener that often gets things off to a very wobbly anxiety ridden start because all of a sudden at the beginning of the interview when you're most nervous you're suddenly asked to narrow things down and try to like figure out well what part of myself should I talk about um, and it's really hard to think clearly when you're feeling that anxious uh, and nervous so um, what I want to share with you is a sort of before and after makeover of how you can respond to this question and I encourage you after you watch this video to head over to my blog because I talk about how different strategies I give you for narrowing down your focus and preparing for this question ahead of time but right now I want to give you a before and after example so let's just say that there's a student who has decided that she wants to talk about how she it tends to be uh, a quiet person, a little bit more introverted than others, and that she's attracted to this particular school because of its small class sizes. So I'm going to be the interviewer for a second. Hi, I'm uh, John Marcus, and uh, a 1999 alum of College X, and just thought, you know, to get things started today, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? And so let's just say that the student's initial response was to say something like, well, I'm really interested in X college because it's known for its small, intimate classes, and I tend to be a bit reserved um, that I do better in these small kind of classes. Um, so this kind of environment's good for me. You know, I mean, if you're just coming up with this on the spot, it's really not the worst answer, but you shouldn't be coming up with your answer for this question on the spot. You should prepare for it ahead of time. And so let me give you an, a revised version, something that's more developed, that really takes the interviewer sort of into this person's experience and not just the literal experience, but sort of like what goes through her mind and her process. Um, and that can sort of stimulate a genuine discussion afterwards. So you break out of that just like grilling uh, process of interviewing and start having a really dynamic, exciting discussion with your interviewer. So here's the made over version of the student's response. Well, I go to a school where a lot of the students are very vocal and outgoing and it really used to make me think that there was something wrong with me because I'm quieter and more introverted. And I really did start feeling like this, 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 my being quieter and being introverted was somehow a flaw. But then I happened to come across Susan Cain's TED Talk. I don't know if you know her, but she's the author of Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. And she really helped me start seeing that I can make um, powerful, valuable contributions in my own way, that I don't have to be the same as everybody else, and that you know both introverts and extroverts have um, important things to give to their environments, and there needs to be, you know, there need to be both types of people in the world, in school, in, in the business world. And so, you know, I recognize now that I'll probably never be the kind of person who just jumps first into a big class discussion, but I have found that I really do enjoy discussing and sharing my ideas and collaborating in smaller group settings. And one of the reasons why I, I'm attracted to X College is because it's known for having these small class sizes. In fact, when I came to visit, 
I got to sit in on a philosophy class and I really liked how the professor started off with a lecture and setting up these big issues and then we got to choose uh, who we wanted to work with, like one or two other people in a small group to analyze specific passages. And so we would talk through them together and then the teacher would open up things for a bigger class discussion and I felt like this is just the perfect environment for me because I can participate in in valuable ways but in ways that feel right for me I mean I do plan on majoring in science but I know that it's a similar situation in the biology department so I was really really excited to um, to really discover that this is a good environment for me and I'm curious you know what what was it like for you with the small class sizes and you know, how did that help? How do you think that helped you in terms, not only in terms of your major and developing your expertise, but also professionally? Did you did you see a connection between, you know, the smaller class sizes and that want more one on one mentoring of the professors at, in terms of your professional development and how it helped you? So um, you can say that that is so, not only just so much more developed, it's really taking the interviewer into the student's mind and her process. And if you want to get sort of behind the scenes into the mind of a college English professor who's also been on an admissions committee, that is, if you want to get into my mind about what makes this particular response so strong and effective and learn the underlying strategies for how to create this kind of anecdote and um, also how to narrow down your focus and prepare for this prompt, head over to my website, www.jenniferbbernstein.com and just head over to my blog on there. You'll see this uh, accompanying piece. Accompanying piece. <laughs> and while you're at it, I strongly encourage you to sign up for your access to two free online, two free sessions from my online program. So that's it for now. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.